So let's look at the picture of how our world looks. It looks like a huge sphere that contains many planets, billions, like ours in a honeycomb structure. Our ancestors called those neighboring planets, Chertogi, and every small portion is a planet similar to ours. And every planet, Chertog, used to have names that our ancestors knew about. With the following names, Chertog Devi, Vepria, Shuki, Zedmei, etc. As you can see the picture of animals are the names of various Chertogs there is a Russian fairy tale, Skazo Finistiazanom Sokol, where a young girl travels through various planets, Chertogi, and wanders there. So back to the structure of the big sphere. On this huge spherical surface, the radius of the curve of every planet is so big that the surface of the planet is curved with a huge radius. Not flat but almost, I hope you understand the simple geometry. This huge sphere is floating in space. We are not alone in space, our neighbors aren't that far away. As you can see on the picture of the huge sphere. Now take your time to perceive and process the information, take your time, have a cup of tea. Now let's have a look at our place, our Chertog called Midgard. M, ma, D, Dom means home, Ga, movement, R, light. D, means Dobro, goodness, my home that is moved by light and kindness, goodness. Midgard. And every planet, Chertog, on this huge sphere, there are billions of Chertogs, have the same size and structure but at a different stage of evolution. And with different proportions of continents and oceans. Every Chertog is surrounded and isolated by a wall of ice, like a cylinder shape, and at the top covered with a membrane as a dome structure. And the whole structure of a Chertog is in a hexagonal shape section cell, like a honeycomb. As you can see in the movie clip, where the big ice wall is. In the beginning, there were human beings on every Chertog planet, and in every Chertog cell, the human may be a different color, black, red, yellow, white, and a different size, but human. They may have different eye colors also. As you know, we have on our planet so many different colors and types of people, this proves the point. As you can see. There were giants in our Chertog as well, they were helpful to construct some buildings that require the strength and size of a giant. So the existence of giants depends on the climate and ecology of the Chertog, oxygen, content of atmosphere, sunlight, number of suns, etc. What does that mean? Number of suns. How many suns? The Chertog may have three suns, two suns may be like a lamp, and when the lamp is changed we may have temporary darkness, solar eclipse. As you can see on the picture, 
There is a sun and moon and stars in the sky that produce some light above our head on the dome membrane that isolates our home Chertog from space. All the stars and clouds that appear in the sky during night and daytime are made to appear, and sometimes they happen to land accidentally as a flying object. A clip from the movie, The Truman Show, 1998, proves the point. Now about the sun, the sun as we know it from school books and NASA information is not true. The sun is not that far away, it is located right above us at a distance of 3,000 kilometers, artificial sun, under the dome membrane and the moon that we see in the sky is not a real moon, it's a hologram. Picture. But what is hidden behind the picture? It's a good question. So what is hidden behind the hologram curtain? Artificial spacecraft behind the moon hologram curtain. And in the beginning there were three moons. They were called Fata, Lelia and Messiak. Moon, Messiak is our present moon. Let's define Ark. That's how our ancestors called spacecraft. The Ark's spacecraft were performing all kinds of military and research tasks. Let's not talk now about what happened with the other two arcs, spacecrafts Fata and Lelia, that were actually described in the Vedic scriptures. People may think that this moon is kind of our enemy's craft that's influencing us to be programmed slaves and harvesting our energy of emotions of lost stress, suffering and aggravation, etc. The name of this energy is called Gava. This energy of suffering, pain and loss is the food for demonic entities, but I can say that our Moonarch is a spacecraft where our friends actually reside. They are human beings, and when people remember that they were taken by spacecraft in their dreams and such, they were actually inside the Moon spacecraft on the other Chertogs. There are also dome membranes, and there are suns and moons above their heads. How many depends on the situation, they may have no sun at all for a while. They may have a different atmosphere, different flora and fauna, different climate conditions. So people may appear to be different. Based on various climate and atmospheric conditions of a particular planet Chertog. So, as a conclusion, every cell, Chertog planet, has its own membrane with suns and moons atmosphere and climate and there are human beings there that look like us but may differ in color and size. There are also levels if we go deeper into the big sphere. And there are also cells in a honeycomb fashion there, and levels are divided by water as you can see on the picture. So it's like layers of a multi-layered structure. There are cells on the first layer then oceans under it, and further down, another layer with oceans under it, and in the oceans underneath are gigantic whales and turtles that live there. How many layers are there? Can't tell right now, probably seven or eight layers. Now if the cell is left without maintaining life there, the cell is restoring its original structure. Oceans will disappear from the surface of the planet and it will be covered by a solid continent, and there will be growing trees and rocks. The state of this cell is kind of frozen. And when it is time to activate life there, the whales will come under the planet and warm it up to a certain temperature, and life starts germinating there. And the whales are held there by gigantic turtle. The turtle lives and sleeps there for millions of years. So we look at the design and structure of our big sphere, and the question is, who is this global predator? The cells down there at the deeper levels have creatures that may not look like human beings. And I'm convinced that the invaders, predators that invaded and enslaved the human race on our planet cell Midgard came from the underneath levels. Some kind of united conglomerate of underneath predators, a reptilian, Draco-type creatures. So, if among our friends and ancestors that are located in neighboring Chertogs, that we used to call gods, like Sverog, Perun and others, there are dark entities beneath. Also powerful creatures that live and need to feed on human energy, that are vampiric, demonic in nature, like Belzevuv, Milo and others. Now when did they invade our Earth Midgard? And what stages did we go through, at that time, to begin? 
Let's have a look how long we humans have been living in our Midgard Earth cell and how the story they teach us in schools about human history is a complete lie. We have been here for a very long time, and we were called the Rus people. This name means simply being of light. It's not a nation a genetic code definition, it means being of light. There is also another name of Aryans, which means the same people of light, people with light in the mind and heart. We human beings had been living on our Midgard Earth for approximately 1.5 billion years. The Midgard population at the time were people of light, people with light in the mind and heart. 1.5 billion years ago, the Captain Sverog arrived on a spacecraft from another Chertog to our Midgard Earth and founded a new settlement, a kind of eco-village of Rus people here, beings of light. There are plenty of Russian fairy tales, one of them speaks about how Sverog was sending a duck to find Earth for settlement, and why the duck had a red beak. Now we will jump to the time of 40,000 years ago, when God Perrin arrived in a spacecraft the Midgard Earth and here is what he said to people of Midgard, My name is Perrin, son of Sverog. I have come from another Chertog, Asgard, Urij Zemli Svagi Nebusnodj, where the river flows Iria. There will be times here on Midgard Earth when dark entities will arrive from the underneath Chertogs, and they will be trying to settle here on Midgard Earth, and try to fool and cheat. Tell lies and outsmart you people by many means and their smart ways, they will try to marry your women, and will do many horrible things to your place and your people. Their purpose is to poison the souls of your native people of Midgard, so that you won't be able to reach Asgard Earth. Now the reason they gave us warning at the time was because of the war that was going on with dark entities on many other cells, Chertogs, of the Big Sphere. So they knew that dark forces were planning to visit and poison Midgard Earth. So we had to meet the invaders, predators with our own military power available at the time, and stand and defend our land and people to the best of our abilities. Here are some of the words of wisdom that were left to us from our ancestors. Do not follow the dark ways, but the ways of lightness and light, because those who go dark ways will perish. Do not listen to those who speak lies and cheat, but recognize the truth. Do not listen to those who say that life ends, and do not listen to those who say that your neighbor is your enemy. But listen to those who say that your neighbor is your friend. Read the words of wisdom three days a week. The week was nine days at the time, on third, seventh and ninth day of the week. And remember how we won the battle with Dark Entity, Koshi, and broke the egg of evil that was the Moon Lelia, a spacecraft of Koshi's, and that caused the flood. Remember the fifteen years of journey from Daria land to Rasenia land and the feast and holiday of a successful journey after the flood and how we celebrated with our ancestors our 16th year after the journey to Rasenia. Do not eat the food that has blood on it, but eat food that is clean of blood, the food that grows in the fields, gardens and forests of the land, then you won't get sick and suffer from diseases. Remember your ancestors and defend your brothers and sisters and mothers, your daughters and sons, and remember your kin and your relatives, do not be jealous of luxuries and splendor of foreign lands, but remember that you yourself can make miracles, do not try to convince those that do not want to listen to the words of wisdom. So the invaders, predators invaded the land of Midgard 40,000 years ago. The predators were using the tactics of cowards. They didn't go for open battle. Instead they attacked places where they wouldn't meet any sound defense, and slowly, gradually captured a big portion of land under their control with all kinds of technology, money, drugs, alcohol etc., and smart devices. They used to fool and delude the people of Midgard. They were capturing people like wild animals, mostly women and children so they could change their mental and psychological configuration to serve their hidden agenda in the future. And women were used for breeding the mutant species to be used in the hidden plans and agenda. People were aware of the stuff that was going on in Midgard but there were not many resources to stop it. 
Our ancestors used to build and use pyramids as portals to move into various chertogs. Those pyramids are different from Egyptian pyramids. The real pyramids are hidden in many places throughout the earth, in the jungles and forests and under the oceans. The pyramids have many functions but we talk here about moving from one chertog cell to the neighboring cell. So with time, gradually people were poisoned, infected with the virus brought by predators, and the population of Midgard was divided into two parts. On the west formed the civilization of Atlantis, mutants of invaders, and on the east there were still people of the light. People of the light lived in harmony with the land. They had a knowledge of how careful and caring we needed to be for Mother Nature. Their ways were spiritual and magical ways. And the population of Atlantis were developing high-tech stuff and industries that we have today in modern society. Atlantean people were doing a lot of exploration of minerals of Earth like we see today, the results of which we see at the Grand Canyon in Arizona and in other places and all kinds of perversion that can be seen in the pictures. They were totally programmed by the predators to do their devilish, vampiric stuff. And Perrin was saying, because of the influence of the predators, people will forget the wisdoms of our ancestors and do a lot of mad and perverted acts. Perrin, son of Sverog, said, there will be merchants and false prophets that will tell you lies and stories to lure you into their wicked ways. People will start doing their wicked stuff stated here, lust, lie and cheat, ignorance, laziness, worry and satisfying belly habits, lack of self-responsibility and decision-making, those wicked ways help the manipulators to cause conflicts and wars among people of Midgard. You probably heard in the Vedic scriptures about Kali Yuga, the night of horror and loss. I will call this phase a kind of putting people into a delusional sleep that they aren't even aware of what they're doing. The last time this happened on our Midgard Earth was 250 years ago. Now back to our real story, history 13,000 years ago. Atlantis became strong enough to be used as a weapon against the neighboring population of Midgard. They started to attack first the country Hippoborea, they used nuclear weapons and that was a terrifying war which destroyed both Atlantis and Hyperborea. And the manipulators needed the human population to be saved to a certain extent because they wanted to use and abuse them as a cattle and sheep stock that we can see today in our modern society. During the war 13,000 years ago, the Ark Moon spacecraft Lelia was destroyed because it was captured by our enemies and we had to blow it up. That was a loss but it destroyed the main forces of our enemies that allows us to survive until today. Here are some of Perrin's words, you will recognize your enemies by their wicked ways. They put on a lot of makeup, and they can be both genders, male and female, at the same time, and they are secretly hiding their appearance from the public. Now about wars. Any acts of war and action on any land will cause a loss of population on both sides allowing the predators to steal population, children, goods, and to take control of the land. They are not interested in victory for any side, they have their own hidden agenda. Perrin's words, there will be a lot of wars that will wipe out the population of humanity, and more deaths of human beings gives energy to the predators. The only purpose of all acts of the global predator is to convert the remaining population after wars into obedient cattle and sheep. You may meet a lot of people today that will say, I do not want to know anything. I'm enjoying my job, my house, my car, and my supermarket. I love my present life and do not see any slavery here. So the population that was left after war, disaster wanted to live and have food and shelter, they are almost ready to become obedient cattle. So, after all the calamities, the predators succeeded in dividing Midgard Earth into various regions, colonies, countries with different languages and religions and customs. So it will be easy to put them into conflict or competition and easy to manipulate and control them. So, 7,524 years ago, started the creation of our world in Star Cathedral. 
One of the tools of the global predator is to wipe out the memory by changing calendars so often and rewriting history every 200 years or so. But our memory is alive and kicking because it is in our genes. Genetic code memory. Now, an example of historic war 7,524 years ago was between the Rus population and the country where China now is. That ended with the victory of the Rus people, and that is why there is a wall in China today along the border. That is another reason that the new calendar was created and books of old were burned. There was a war 250 years ago that wiped out the previous civilization of the Rus people. Somewhere around 1780, as you probably remember, the predators always try to clean the surface of Earth after the wipeout of civilization so they can prepare the place for new cattle and sheep, humans, to arrive so they wouldn't know what was here before. But at the time of the last wipeout, the attack from the predators was intended to be final, because the previous ones demolished and killed almost all sages. Wizards and beings that knew the magical arts. Lelia the Ark, our spacecraft, was destroyed 13,000 years ago, then the Fata Ark was destroyed with a nuclear weapon and that caused a flood. There is a monument to Fata Ark in the Vatican that you can see today. The monument commemorates the victory of the predators over human race. Now, an interesting fact as to why there is so much salt water on Earth. As you remember, it was mentioned that originally on Midgard Earth there were no oceans, and they appeared due to much work of powerful rotary excavators, excavations of rocks and minerals, e.g. the Grand Canyon in Arizona, all over the Earth's surface and Mother Nature had to fill the huge caves with water because in the law of nature there should be no emptiness. That is the reason why we have two-thirds RDs of the surface of the planet covered with water. Another clue why when a big spacecraft Fartar Ark was destroyed, it caused flooding. And that was reflected in biblical scriptures as flood. The only important detail is that Fartar Ark was destroyed not long ago. And another curious observation is that there are buildings and architecture you may find on every continent, country today with magnificent art of design and splendor with very similar details almost. As if there was one architect builder that builds them everywhere. And the books will tell us that all of it was built in 18th-19th century, but firstly there were non-stop wars at that time, and also, if you investigate the details of the buildings, they had all kinds of utility feeds there, electrical, gas, waste fluid piping, water piping etc. And that doesn't fit the description of the 18th century when people used candles for lighting. Now the same type of architecture suggests that, at the time these buildings were built, there was one country and one civilization throughout the whole of Midgard Earth, that's our planet. Though there are differences with some places like China, and other places. Due to the fact that the predators, after wiping out the population, were bringing their slaves from different Chertog cells to our planet. That is why there is a different culture and architecture that you may find today in Asia. And you may find the different people today in Africa and Asia. And they were brought here by the predators from various enslaved Chertogs of the Big Sphere. The traces of the flood can be noticed if the buildings are carefully analyzed. You may see that all of the old buildings are 3 to 5 meters, one or two floors, below ground level. And this phenomena for old buildings exists on every continent today. Now if you look at the surface of Earth today, e.g. using Google Maps, you will see a lot of traces of huge excavation work done by the predators throughout Earth. And a lot of excavation of minerals is going on in the territory of the USA, so very little land is left to support the continent today. An analogy would be as if turning a pyramid upside down. Now another curious fact, there are very few places where you can see gigantic trees, California sequoia trees and others, where their age is more than 1,000 to 2,000 years and almost all the rest of the forests were built artificially about 250 years ago to conceal the crime that has been done to the planet and population by the predators. 
As you can see in old pictures, 200 years ago there were no trees. And another one, dinosaurs were coexisting well with humans 250 years ago, and also mammoths too. What killed them was a nuclear attack and the consequent nuclear winter after the event of 250 years ago. As you can see, there are a lot of caves of different diameters after nuclear bombs landed on Earth 250 years ago. They can also be seen on Google Maps. There is more proof. You may notice the old buildings have steps and high doorways, ceilings for big people, 14 feet tall, and small people, 6 feet tall. The reason is that here on Earth, big and small people were coexisting together. The giants probably were brought from other chertogs by the predators. Now let's take a look at some strange architecture in the various places that appeared to be in a star shape. Why is that? Not what you may be thinking. There was a practical reason for pumping gas from Earth. And the reason they built strong high walls was to prevent big animals from entering and damaging the intricate technological complex inside the walls. They built the city that had a gas pipeline available at the spot. Now let's have a look at the architecture of the big buildings with columns. What is that type of building for? The reason for the many columns is that these were electric utility stations that were producing electricity from ether, research Nikola Tesla's work, and supplying the city with free electricity. Now let's take a look at the architecture of churches, Surkov, in Russian, and the reason for this type of architecture was to connect to the information field to be able to learn, know and create. The wise man and sages were teaching children in those places. Though after the 1917 revolution in Russia, the government destroyed most of the churches of amazing architecture that had a lot of Vedic ancient relics. The famous Moscow Cathedral of St. Basil was a Vedic ancient place of Perun, son of Sverog. There was a big repair work that destroyed all the sacred symbols and writings on the walls and side. And another detail, at the top of every church. There is a vertical rod decorated with some art. It has a practical application, to collect energy from space, ether. But those who serve in churches today, clergy and popes, have no clue of the real purpose of the architecture. Similar to the cargo cult story. The same is true for colosseums which we are told were there for gladiator fights, etc., which is untrue. This architecture was used as a solar energy collecting farm. There is one in Tadzikistan Republic which was built in the 1970s. Now about UFOs, this was our technology from our previous civilization that the predators use today for their own benefit and agenda. That's why they do not want to talk about it. So, let's take a look at this picture and ask a few questions that probably people have in mind. Who are Masonic members? Who are Jewish? Evre in Russian language, people. Ev means first. R-E-J is a crossover of a mast in a boat. Jewish people gave this name to themselves to portray that they are the first and leading edge people. Now let's have a look at a clip from the film, Transformers. Here there is a clue. Religion was formed to unite groups of people on a religious basis. Because after wipeout of the population 236 years ago, there was a need to give people something to believe in. And our ancestors sent us a sage magician, VOLHV in Russian, so he could help and guide us to improve the situation. People know this man by the name of Jesus Christ, other name is Radomir, at birth. He was given the name Elise, but the name is not important right now. He was killed by the Murds, a Jewish group, and then they convinced people to take a Christian religion. There are known facts about the enforcing of the Christian religion all over Russia by using sword and fire. At the time, a lot of people were killed in order to enforce Christianity in Russia. The history books are a complete lie. Here is a simple example, let's take a look at the year 1656 as it was actually written, I-O-56, I, was changed into, 1, and O was altered into whatever was needed at the time. 
So, in the last 250 years, the predators gave us 2,000 years of history. So why did our ancestors not help us? Why did they allow those horrible events on Midgard Earth to occur? The reason is that there was a global war with dark entities in many places, Chertogs, at the same time. And our ancestors did not have enough resources to save the situation on Midgard Earth, so they had to sacrifice our place to save others. It's understandable that it hurts to learn this. And it's a known fact that, during war, decisions are made, and losses are inevitable. The fact is life is never lost. There is no end in life. And our ancestors are always sending helpers here, indigo people, prophets and magicians. As you may recall, there were three Ark spacecrafts, two were destroyed, and one is still here. One Ark was repaired and it is always near and watching and guarding over Midgard Earth now. There are some people that are taken to another Chertog by the ancestors, it's not know how many. And we are here infected by a virus. So we are here, still occupied by predators. Dear friends, we live in an amazing time right now on our Midgard Earth, and every one of us is here for a reason. To defend our kind, family and kin, and the land of our fathers and our ancestors is the responsibility of every man of the people of light, till our son, Yarillo, is here shining on us. Look and see, hear and perceive, with your mind and heart. I want to knock at the door and heart of every human being who is still asleep and delusional or under the program of the Matrix. There are controllers, manipulators that control every government and politician, military and financial structures. At the same time, there is a lot of madness in the world that manifests by those structures, gov, banks, corporations, Hollywood and fashion etc., that constitutes the matrix of enslavement that has been established on Earth before we were born here, and all institutions of education, medical and pharmaceutical and many industries are working for that matrix in automatic mode. People behave like programmed robots without even noticing themselves. And the question is why is it like that, and who built this matrix, and for what? Why are we ignorant of geography, science and true knowledge of even basic stuff? Who keeps us ignorant and busy working for the matrix, and why? We are like a stock of sheep and cattle, doing a useless routine called work, and getting paid for this just barely enough to survive. So revelation number number one, our earth is invaded and occupied by invaders. Who are they? They are not Americans, Zionists, Illuminati or other groups. Those known names do exist but those groups are just puppet players. And slaves of the invaders controllers, the only difference is they have more money at their disposal for their work, service to the controllers. Repeating again, our earth is invaded and enslaved. Already 40,000 years ago, but real success our controllers got only 250 years ago. I will call those controllers global predators, for the sake of convenience of the video. The fact is that the matrix created by these global predators was able to poison not only the bodies of humans but their souls as well. A long time ago, we lived peacefully without money, anger. Revenge, jealousy, greed, lust, desire to have a lots of money, perversion, cheating and lies, ignorance and many other characteristics that sums up the character of the modern human and modern society standard. As a result, humans are invaded by a virus that doesn't allow them to be who they are in essence and at the root of our nature. A man sees himself only 7% of what he is and the brain works at only 3% of its capacity. But not long ago, man had knowledge and wisdom, and used his brain to full capacity, not only the head brain, but the spine brain and those located in the guts and solar plexus. And in essence, that virus mutated, so that it manifested in every aspect of our modern society. And all of those technologies applied, that manifest in the world as fashion and popular trends, in reality converting humans into cattle and sheep, controlled by global predator. So who is this global predator? 
Example of science. There is no gravitational force a field that they teach us in schools. And our Earth is not rotating around the Sun. And the Moon is not rotating around the Earth. Why then do they teach us false science and theories? So what our Earth looks like is important to know and understand. Our Earth is not flat. But not as NASA shows on the picture either. It's kind of spherical and flat together, like if you cut the top portion of a basketball and surround it with a wall of ice. Many thanks and gratitude to Vyacheslav Kotlyarov who opened and shared this with people. There will be another continuation of this video later because there is still much more to tell.